it. Oh, welcome, boys and girls, and all the new people to the Batman Army to a brand new short horror movie review. And as you can tell by the title, we are reviewing the house that Jack built. This movie was made by Lars von Troyer, who done films like um, *Nymphomaniac* and *Antichrist*. And *Antichrist* is definitely up there, one of my favourite films, just because how fucked up it is. And I feel like this one tops all of his previous movies and I really really love this movie I mean because it's got gore it's got good storytelling and to be fair it's a nice long film I think it's like two and a half hours long and um, yeah you don't get that much with horror movies these days they're more based on the hour and a half movie where this film has been given time to let a story drag out and the cast of this film I'm just reading from the notes hopefully I can pull it on there and it doesn't fucking stop anything we good? sweet yeah the cast of the film is um Matt Dillon you guys probably know Matt Dillon from films like um, You and Me and Dupree and like there's something about Mary like so, sort of like old rom-com movies um, this guy's from um, because I never knew him from anything till I was watching it with my mum and she was like I swear he's in like them films and I was like it's like an Elijah Wood situation with Maniac like you never saw Elijah Wood as playing a psychopath and Elijah Wood plays a pretty fucking decent psychopath in Maniac and Matt Dillon plays a really good psychopath in this movie and to get into the role for this movie, he took inspiration for, for um, is it Ted Bundy? The one who killed all the women. He took a lot of inspiration from him for this role. And when you go and look at like, Ted Bundy documentaries, you can see like the similarities in them. And then you've also got Bruno Garns playing um, Virgin This, who's played in a lot of older movies. I've never seen anything that he's in, and don't really know anything that he's been in. I think I saw him in Unknown with uh, Liam Neeson, but that's about it. I haven't really seen him anywhere else. He must be more like one of those older actors that done a lot of films. A bit like Anthony Hopkins, but Anthony Hopkins is obviously more famous. And then you've also got a surprise, um, surprise appearance from Uma Thurman in this movie, who is girl one. That's all that actors get classed as in this film is girl one, man one, girl two, man two. Well, they don't have names. So you can see where this is going with the movie. But I was sitting there, I was all, when I saw the credit and I saw it say, saying Uma Thurman, I was like, that can't be the one from Kill Bill. And it doesn't look like her. Whether it's been like a few years since she's been in a movie with this one, this was released in like 2018. I was like, that can't be her. But turns out it is. Like the one from Kill Bill, the one from Pulp Fiction, she's in this. And there's also like a few other good actors in this movie. Um, there's Sophia, someone from the redhead girl from Mad Max Fury Road. I can't remember the her last name, Sophia something. But she's also in this movie as like girl three, I think. But um, yeah, the acting in this movie is absolutely spot on. Um, I think um, there was rumours like Lars von Troyer filmed this movie in two parts so like you filmed the first part and then went to go and film the second part while that first part was still getting edited so you could see how much um appreciation was put into the movie and that's what i like about this film it is so artistic in every single way just the way they speak about stuff the way why he's doing it and the explanations he's giving and I think what a lot of people don't like about Lars von Troyer, he tries to get his his in, his insight into his movies. Like <clears throat> people are thinking this movie is from his head. He's like, it's not killing, it's murdering. But that's what I like. I've completely explained that one. What he's done with this, he's. In this movie, he talks about making murder art, an art form, or just some artistic about killing, which, if you think about it, horror movies are a piece of art. Like, 
I know you've got films like the Serbian film, The Human Centipede, Sallow, all of them. They're all fucked up films, but they are a piece of art. They're things that has been in someone's mind and pull it onto the screen. And even though it's not real, people are like, oh, it could happen. No, it, it could. But that's what the film is. It's art. And I... I love this film for that. Like they're explaining, it's like a sort of fourth wall thing. It's like, yeah, I'm killing these people, but secretly it's been filmed and turned into a masterpiece for other guys viewing. Do I want to say pleasure? I don't know. I don't, I don't think pleasure is the right word. Um, but yeah, I think this film spent like a year in pre production as well, um, while filming both parts. Um, yeah, it got a lot of awards, to be fair. The budget on this film was like 9.9 .9 million, I think, and then they only earned like 5.5 million in the box office, but this one of those movies that will uh, gain more traction through the years. So films like a Serbian film, yeah, they're not going to make any money in the box office, but that's going to be classed as a cult movie for years to come, and people are going to go back and pay to have that on a physical copy like I think I paid like £20 for it for the Blu-ray version of Serbian film and who knows in a few years if you can even get hold of it and um, yeah I think that's what's going to happen with this film this film reminded me a lot of Maniac um, due mainly just to the main actor because it's in a role that you do not expect him to be in um, but this won a lot of awards, it won Best Euro Film, Best Actor for Matt Dillon, Best Screenplay for Von Troyer, Best Cinematography and Best Visual Effects. Um, yeah, it won, like I said, it won all them awards and then it obviously got put onto the Cannes Film Festival where it was like reported that 100 people walked out of the premiere of it while watching it cause it was too gruesome that like the stuff they don't like to see I mean if you haven't seen Antichrist then you know what Lars von Troy is about he does a lot of messed up shit especially even like Nymphomaniac it's crazy what he does and puts onto the screen but then even with that 100 people walking out the film ended up getting a 10 minute standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival because people were so impressed with it and literally thought it was a piece of art and it's like he has created art there and it's absolutely amazing and I think now I know this film was made like 2018 but it's been brought up a lot now a lot of people are talking about this movie um, as one I think it's actually already starting to get like it's cult status up there for this and yeah I mean for the special effects the kills in this film they're shocking and they're gory and I can see I mean if the people walked out for the scene that I'm thinking of where um yeah there's a, f there's a few things in this film that people do not like putting into movies and one of them are being obviously kids getting killed and you don't see that in movies I can't remember what was the latest film that I saw where a kid got killed Doctor Sleep when they tortured that kid people didn't like that in theatres because they were like we don't see this and we're not used to getting this in horror movies and they obviously put that into this film as well and it's just absolutely amazing the way they talk about stuff how why he's building a house, how is an engineer and stuff like that, just how they speak about this movie it's just so artistic and beautiful in a sort of way um, but after watching this I've really wanted, I've grown that movie love for Von Troyer and I want to go back and watch Antichrist again because I've only watched Antichrist and Nymphomaniac films once but now I want to watch them again and have a different style of mind while watching them thanks to this movie because this movie is up there with one of my favourite movies of all time on, on the horror page anyway I mean having gore up there is a good thing for me I love gore, like, I love the Serbian film 
I shouldn't really be saying that. I love the Serbian film, I love the Human Centipedes, I love the Saw movies. But there's just something about this film that's... It's got the shock value, and then it can tell a good story. And then there's all it... The ending, I'm not going to say anything about the ending. It's your fault if you Google it and find the ending without watching this movie. I went into this movie not knowing, and I was sitting there like, whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa. And, um... Yeah, I've, I've, there's nothing really more I could say about... I know Rotten Tomatoes give it like a 40% out of 100, but I don't go by Rotten Tomatoes or film critics. Because I feel like film critics slate a lot of movies these days and ruin the movie's hype sort of thing. Or then now hype a movie up to so much, or Batman vs Superman didn't come out and it was utter shit. But I tend to, that's why I don't tend to look at critics, so I tend to just sit back, relax and watch it and then give my opinion on it and if you guys loved Antichrist, if you've seen Antichrist or anything of Von Troyer's work then you will love the house that Jack built I mean, like I said, I think it's up there with one of the best artistic um, killer movies out there like how much it goes into his mind and that is a killer with OCD as well it's absolutely mental but yeah I really enjoyed this film uh, I'd say out of 10 I'd give it an 8 I'll give it an 8 8, eight and a half out of 10 I think pushing a 9 it could easily push a 9 for me but if you guys have seen this movie, give me your thoughts on it. What did you guys think of it? I mean, I really love this movie. And I want to... If you've guys seen it, give me your thoughts. Um, but do you like Lars von Troyer's stuff? Have you seen any of his other stuff? Um, but yeah, I think I'm, after watching this, I think I start want to start reviewing more of the messed up movies. Um, I'll probably... What do I want to put on the list next? I'll probably put a vote down below. I'll put a vote of three films. A Serbian film. The Last House on the Left. The original one, not the remake. So you got a Serbian film, Last House on the Left, or Maniac with Elijah Woods. Out of them three, choose down below what you'd like to see reviewed next. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this small review and given my thoughts on it. Um, I know this isn't like a normal review because I don't want to go into spoilers. Because I don't want to talk about all the killings because then you're not going to watch the movie. Um, but I obviously had to talk about the shock scene where they kill a child. But I'm not saying anything more than that. But if you want to see, or oh, maybe one of the best serial killer movies out there I definitely recommend The House of Jack Built so yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed if you have smash that like button give me your thoughts on this um, if you feel like that I should speak about anything else don't be afraid to comment it down below I take any criticism is good criticism is that is that right any criticism something like that but I take it all in and vent it out in a good way to you guys so please smash that like button hit that subscribe button and join the Batman army so on the road to 10,000 subscribers and we will be live streaming tomorrow I know I had a few comments on my latest video saying I missed it 6 um, I think it's 7 to 8 p.m. you can catch my live streams here only on my YouTube channel I don't do it on Twitch or anything like that straight here easy to find so make sure you turn on that notification bell to get notified when we do go live around 7 or 8 p.m. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. And if there is any movies you would like to see me reviewed in the future, just drop them down below in the description. Or in the description? In the comment section. Or follow all my social media that's in the description. And message me over there. Any way you want, I reply to everyone on everything. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. I've been dominating Spud. I love you, Potato Manami. Stay home, stay safe, and likewise, don't forget to stay starchy. Uh, and I find it hard to let go. The memories keep me together. Let it fight till the end. No pressure, no pressure. And I find it hard.